Chapter 9 Then Job answered and said, Of a truth I know that it is so, and how can man be just with God? If one should desire to contend with him, he could not answer him one of a thousand. He is wise in heart and mighty in strength, who hath hardened himself against him and prospered. Who removeth the mountains and they know it not, when he overturneth them in his anger? Who shaketh the earth out of her place, and the pillars thereof tremble? Who commandeth the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars? Who alone stretcheth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea? Who maketh the bare Orion and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south? Who doeth great things past finding out? Yes, marvelous things without number. Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth on also, but I perceive him not. Behold, he snatches away, who can hinder him? Who will say unto him, What doest you? God will not withdraw his anger. The helpers of Rechab did stoop under him. How much less shall I answer him, and choose out my garments with him? Whom though I were righteous, yet would I not answer. I would make supplication to him that contended with me. If I had called, and he answered me, yet would I not believe that he would hearken unto my voice? He that would break me with a tempest, and multiply my wounds without cease, that would not suffer me to take my breath, but will fill me with bitterness? If it be a matter of strength, lo, he is mighty, and if of justice, who will appoint me a time? Though I be righteous, mine own mouth shall contemn me. Though I be innocent, he shall prove me perverse. I am innocent. I regard not myself. I despise my life. It is all one. Therefore I say, He destroyeth the innocent and the wicked. If the scourge slay suddenly, He will mock at the calamity of the guiltless. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If it be not He, who then is it? Now my days are swifter than a runner. They flee away. They see no good. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the vulture that swoopeth on the prey. If I say, I will forget my complaint, and I will put off my sad countenance, and be of good cheer. I am afraid of all my pains. I know that you will not hold me guiltless. I shall be condemned. Why then do I labor in vain? If I wash my, myself with snow water, and make my hands never so clean, yet will you plunge me in the ditch, and mine own clothes shall abhor me? For he is not a man, as I am, that I come and answer him, that we should come together in judgment. There is no arbiter between us. The might lay in his hand upon us both. Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his terror make me afraid. Then would I speak, and not fear him, for I am not so with myself. All right, let's go back up verse 1. Now yesterday, Bildad, the confusion of those of wealth, was speaking. Those that, that um, have this wealth, even this wealth of understanding, of those that are confused, the wealth of confusion even. Uh, and basically, Bildad didn't say nothing. He's just accusing once again of Job of, of sin and that Job wouldn't, won't, won't uh, repent of his sin. He won't admit that he's done wrong, and that he's saying, "Does God pervert just judgment? Does God punish?" We'll find out. God is not a respecter of people. God is not a respecter of persons. Innocent uh, get punished as well with the guilty. See, and it adds to the guilt of those that are guilty because the of what they've done to the innocent see they are the ones in the end who really is doing it all because God made you free will God give you a free choice and it comes from within you these wickedness and these evilnesses uh, that are in the earth this is what you wanted and this is what you've asked for and this is what you've got see we sometimes we don't know what we're asking for we ask for one thing and we get another not having any understanding of, of what we've asked for or the total outcome of it. But these, these men, Bill Dodd being one of them, they 
they they're just speaking words off their their, their head they they think that God works in this way that he only punishes the only time we can see this this judgment of God is just in that but we see that now in the in the fire the innocent do suffer and that's really the the bottom line of it all but we're going to pick it up now and Job is going to be responding to Bildad uh, then Job answered and said verse 1 2 of a truth I know that it is so and how can man be just with God of a truth and and that truth is the fact that that God is the most powerful God is almighty and it's it's hard for a man to stand before God because God is, controls all the ways. And if your you your ways, but it begins with the desire of your heart. See, if 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 you were pure and upright, surely now he would awake. But we'll find out. God is always, always in observation of those who stand before God, those who are just before God, those who are righteous before God. Even though we'll see the afflictions of the world, oh, you're not immune from those. But God give you the law, and God give you the abilities to stand up. Three, if one should desire to contend with him, he could not answer him one of a thousand. If, if a man desired to contend with God, to speak with God, to argue with God, one couldn't answer him one in a thousand and that's you wouldn't be able to answer one of God's questions one of a thousand if he was to contend with you but now anything you would ask God he would have an answer for but see your wisdom comes from God your wisdom we'll find out is something he gave you in the beginning for he is wise in heart mighty in strength who hath hardened himself against him and prospered God is wise in heart. See, he, we're referring to God here, or Job is, and mighty in strength. His abilities are with, can't be understood. Who hath hardened himself against him, being God, and prospered? There's no one who can harden himself against God and prosper because that, that you may think you prosper just like Eve didn't think she was dead, but we'll find out. God says you shall not prosper. This is there's a separation. We have a separation. Five. Who removes the mountains and they know it not? When he overturns them in his anger. Who removes the mountains? These mountains, these uh, things that are exalted, these things that are lifted up. We, we, I like to refer to them as these high places. These places that men lift up, these places that men exalt, uh, God overturns them. He removes them. He takes them away, and they don't know it. They have no understanding of it. God overturns them in his anger. Even in his unders, God overturns them, flips them upside down, turns things around, makes them go backwards. Any way you want to look at that, see, in his anger, with in his righteousness, in his justice, Six, who shakes the earth out of her place and the pillars thereof tremble? Who shakes the earth, that's all things of it too, the flesh, out of her place? God has the ability to do this. And the pillars thereof tremble. These things which it stands on, these things which support it, uh, these, all flesh, all flesh, God does. God has the ability to shake it down to its core. Seven, who commands the sun? And it rises not, and seals up the stars. Who can, who has a rule over the sun? That greater light, even the God given in the beginning to rule over the day and the understanding to make known the darkness. Who seals up the stars? These lights from heaven, these understandings that comes from heaven. Who seals them up? Holds them back? Who holds back the waters? God does. See, when they parted the sea, when they parted across the Jordan, who held back the waters? Who held back these and sealed them up and, until they could cross? God did. See, God has those abilities even to seal up understanding. Eight, who alone stretches out the heavens and treads upon the waves of the sea? Who alone stretches out the heavens? That's all the understandings, even the darkness thereof we see. 
and these lights that come out of it and treads upon the waves of the sea. These waves of the sea, these waves are those things that cause themselves to roar. Those things that are caused to roar in the sea. That waters, these large bodies of waters, all these waters, these waters are always understandings. They gather together. The sea are those that are salted. See, those that were salted, they were salted to cleanse, to purify that which was gathered together. And the waves, God alone treads upon the waves. Well, God causes the seas to roar. See, thought God causes the waves to rise up. Nine, who makes the bear, Orion and the Pleiades and the chambers of the south? Who makes the bear? The bear, um, Octurus, uh, I believe the King James Version says, the Hebrew word is ush, and what it means is constellations. It means constellations in reference to those things, those that are gathered together. And these were, we're talking about are groups of stars, groups of lights, groups of understandings that come down. And Pleiades, or Orion, Orion is the, uh, Orion means simpletons, foolish, ignorance. And that's really what it stands for, is ignorance. The, those that are gathered together and these lights and understandings of heaven is just ignorance. Pleiades. Pleiades is that which stored up. It's something that's been stored up. It's like a treasure. And it's the ornaments. And what that's what these treasures are, are the ornaments, that which they wear, this ignorance even. And and the chambers of the south. The south is always that we can witness. It's that parts place from before. And the chambers, that's where they are. That's the rooms of it. That's the the enclosures even they are in. So these chambers of the south, that's where we can witness God. These this ignorance that's stored up, we'll find out, are these lights of heaven and those that are assembled under them. Ten, who doeth great things past finding now. Yes, marvelous things without number. God does. God does these great things and they're past finding out. You can search them out they, uh, in a million ways, but there's one way before the Lord. Yes, they are marvelous things. And they are without number. It's all for the glory of God, all for God's pleasure. We'll find out. Was it all created in the beginning? Lo, to eleven, eleven. Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passes on also, but I perceive him not. Lo, behold, he goes by me, I, I see him not. He he goes by us, we don't even see him. Why? You, know, you can't see God. No one's ever seen God. God is not someone we can look upon. God is not a person. He passes on also, but I perceive him not. God goes before us, but we don't perceive these things. We don't understand him. But God has gone before us in judgment, see, and, and it's the judgment that is before us we can see. If you have understanding, 12, behold, he snatches away. Who can hinder him? Who shall say unto him, What doest you? Behold, look and see. He snatches away, and who can hinder him? Who can stop him? Who can prevent him uh, when God takes you up? Who will say unto him, What doest you? What are you doing? Now, who will question God's understanding? Who will question God's knowledge? 13. God will not withdraw his anger. The helpers of Rakab stooped under him. God will not withdraw his anger. This word anger here is off. And what that means, God will not stop flaring his nostrils. He is angry. That is to show the anger. To show anger. To The flaring of the nostrils is to breathe hard. Holding back, trying to control your frustration. These helpers of Rakab did stoop under him. Rakab was the woman in Jericho who throwed out the scarlet rope out the window. And these spies that did come into her were caused to stoop under God, for he had put great fear on them when they entered the city. 14. How much less shall I answer him and choose out of my arguments with him? 
how much less now shall I answer him and choose out of my arguments with him that, that there's, who can contend with God? Who can argue with the all-knowing, all-knowledge, and all-understanding? 15. Whom, though I were righteous, yet would I not answer, I would make supplication to him that contended with me. Whom, God, though I were righteous, even though I were righteous, and that's be to be just, to be weighed out, found in the balance, you obedient, and doing your portion, yet would I not answer, I wouldn't answer God. I would make supplication to him that contended with me. My my supplication would be mercy. For God is always merciful. See, God is always merciful, and that would be the supplication. 16, if I had called and he had answered me, yet would I not believe that he would hearken unto my voice? If I had called upon the Lord and he had answered me, Yet would I not believe that he would hearken unto my voice. Don't you think if I called unto God and he, God answered me, that I would do what he says? But see, we'll find Job hadn't, hadn't called on the Lord. Job hadn't called on God. Job was look, waiting for God to have show compassion and show mercy. 17. He that would break me with a tempest and multiply my wounds without cause. And I, even God, who has great strength, he would have the ability to break me and crumble me up like twigs with tempest, with anger, with great storm. And he would multiply my wounds without cause. God has the ability to cause, cause it to just keep continuing, even the judgment. That would not suffer me to take my breath, but fill me with bitterness. God wouldn't suffer me to take my breath. He wouldn't destroy me utterly, but leave me alive. See, he has those abilities. Fill me with bitterness to keep this going. But God has mercy. We know God's mercy. and we. 19. If it be a matter of strength, lo, he is mighty. And if of justice, who will appoint me a time? If it's a matter of strength, behold, God's mighty. God's mighty. And if of justice, of righteousness, of, of that being righteous or straight, just before God, who will appoint me a time? Who will appoint me a period? Who will assign me the duty to do this? God would. 20. Though I be righteous, mine own mouth shall condemn me. Though I be innocent, he shall prove me perverse. Even though if I was righteous, mine own mouth would condemn me, my own tongue, my own understanding would come forth. Uh, if I was innocent, if I hadn't sinned, he should prove me perverse. God would, in his understandings, but know my uh, perverseness, know my, know my, that which is within. 21. I am innocent. I regard not myself. I despise my life. I am innocent. No, I have not sinned. Job's maintaining the integrity of his understanding. I regard not myself. I don't look upon my own understanding. I despise my life. Job, Job's not lifted himself up. He's not trying to make supplication unto God and, and ask for God's um forgiveness of any kind because Job has not sinned. 22. It is all one. Therefore I say he destroys the innocent and the wicked. It's all one. See, it's all one. It's all rolled up into one together. Therefore I say he destroys the innocent with the wicked for the innocent is within and the wicked is without. And God does destroy both together because the wickedness will find out the earth is given into the wickedness and the hope of the flesh is within, and the hope of life is within. 23. If the scourge slay suddenly, who will mock at the calamity of the guiltless? If the scourge slay suddenly, if the punishment, whatever comes upon the earth, um, what, all manner of whatever it is, the scourge, though, is that which comes forth most likely of a man-made thing war, pestilence, disease, these things like this that come from the great sin that men do in the earth. If it come and it slay suddenly, he will mock at the calamity of the guiltless. Mock, 
this word mock is too too it's almost to laugh at the calamity of the guiltless those who haven't sinned because see they are innocent and they are taken away by this but it wouldn't be God would mock at it literally this calamity any destruction that would befall this, the innocents are they are always innocent see they are innocent before the Lord God has the ability to take life away or to give life we have the ability to choose between life and death see so it would be our choice that relinquishes the power to God to do whatever God's going to do whether he's going to bless you or curse you or cause you to suffer see give you the understanding or take the understanding away 24 the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covers the faces of the judges thereof. If it be not he, who then is it? The earth, all flesh, that's everything of the earth, that's all flesh. It's given into the hand of the wicked, given over into the hand, the works of the wicked. He hides it from them. They have no understanding. He covers the faces of the judges. This, this word he here, uh, should have been capitalized it should be God because God is the one that covers the faces of the judges he hides these things that are made plain by those that judge because God's the judgment seat belongs to God if it be not he that's God who then is it 25 now my days are swifter than a runner they flee away they see no good my days and my understandings are swifter than a runner and they flee away they see no good. They haven't seen anything good. We'll find out this great wickedness and these judgments we have witnessed in the earth of oh, that men do. 26. They are passed away as the swift ships, as the vulture that swoopeth on the prey. And that's my days. They're passed away like a swift ship off the horizon, and it's gone. As a vulture that swoops on the prey, it darkens under the shadows of its wing as it comes down to hide its prey. 27. If I say, I will forget my complaint, I will put off my sad countenance and be of good cheer. Even if I said that I would forget my complaint, forget this what's bothering me, I, I'll put off my sad countenance, I'll stand up and be happy, I'll be of good cheer. 28. I'm afraid of all my pains. I know that you will not hold me guiltless. So even if I tried to stand up and act like nothing was wrong and went forth, I know that you, he was speaking to Bildad, would not hold me guiltless. You would, would not forget my pains. You would say, oh, oh, I remember when he punished you. I would remember when he did this. Remember, you repented. I shall be condemned. Why then do I labor in vain? If, if I should be condemned, we'll find out. That's all they would do is condemn why then do I labor in vain? Why is my works for nothing? 30. If I wash myself with snow water, make my hands never so clean. And if I wash my hands with snow water, snow is always a, a representation of purity, that which comes down of God. It's white. It's cleansed, in a, so to speak, in an understanding coming down. And if I washed my hands, even my works... See, in this, that which made pure, this water that descends from heaven, what, and made my works ever so clean, 31, yet wilt you plunge me in the ditch, and mine, and mine own clothes shall abhor me. Yet would you plunge me in the ditch, and that's what men would do to you. Even if you tried to be as pure as you could, they would search you out. They would find whatever it was cause you to fall, cause you to stain, and your clothes would abhor you. Your coverings, these are your garments you would wear, these that you're supposed to be making white. 32, for he is not a man, as I am, that I should answer him, that we should come together in judgment, for he is not a man, God is not a man, as I am, uh, that I should answer him, that I should even speak to God that we should come together in judgment that we should 
come together in judgment because God's judgment, God is righteous in his judgment and his understandings. Three thirty three. Therefore, there is no arbiter betwixt us that might lay hand upon us both. There is no arbiter. There is no one that stands between us. See, that might lay hand, might lay his works upon us both, me and God. 34. Let him take his rod away from me, and let not his terror make me afraid. Let him take his rod away from me. His rod, it, that which the sheep are steered by, this rod, this rule that he holds out, or that which causes you to turn, even the way, any way you want to look at it. Let him take that away, and let not his terror make me afraid. His terror, his, as we'll find out, his judgments that are, are made known. See, these things that are made known. Let it not overtake me would be uh, probably a, a better way to look at this. It, let not his his law, his rules, his his, his correction overtake me. In fear, 35. Then would I speak and not fear him, for I am not so with myself. Then would I speak. Then would I speak and have no fear uh, for him, because we would find out God would have corrected us, and we would be in his mercy. For am not so with my. For I am not so with myself, but this is not the way it is. See, that's that's just another way of saying this this is not the way it is. And we'll find Job will continue to speak in the next chapter, and we're going to pick it up there, chapter ten. Turn and return.